All right, in this video, I'm going to do a quick overview of how you can use Native Instruments expansions in other programs without machine. So obviously these expansions started their life as a thing that was created for machine users and to run inside the machine ecosystem. But a few years into it, they decided, let's open this up for everybody else. And so they come with battery kits. So you can load all of the machine groups or kits into battery. They also come with synthesizer patches. They come with loops and they also come with one shots. These uh, just hits that you can load up into any kind of sampler. So what I'll do is walk you through all of the basic elements of these expansions and how you can load each of these aspects into different synthesizers or samplers that you may already have. So some of this will be assuming you have a sampler like Contact or a program like Battery or Massive, but others you'll be able to learn from this and use it inside whatever software you have. So the first thing I'm going to talk about is the groups or kits that come with these expansions. And obviously with Machine you have 16 different sounds or one shots that get loaded onto these pads. And they're usually arranged in some nice manner, maybe a bunch of loops or a bunch of different styles of kits that have, you know, the basic things like a kick drum, a snare drum, a hi-hat, all of that. And so what we have to do is figure out a way to load those 16 sounds or most of those sounds into other programs. And one of the ways to do that is to use a program called KitMaker. The other way to do it is to load up battery. And these kits will come with presets for battery. And usually each expansion has a few extras just for battery. So if you do have battery, then you can access all of these features that come in these groups or kits, which are probably some of my favorite parts of the Native Instruments expansions. So first off, let's just load up battery and I'll show you how to do that. It's pretty basic. I'm here inside Complete Control, which is Native Instruments free container for all of their instruments and sounds and stuff like that. And if you don't have Complete Control, you can go get Complete Start, which is free and comes with Complete Control. I've got a video for that. I'll put a link on Complete Start in the description. I'm just going to add a new instrument. So we'll go to Battery. I find the easiest way to find sounds is to go into the extended view. So I'm going to go over to view, edit view, and then I'm going to look for my browser for battery. I'm going to go over to files and I'm going to find my expansions. So I keep them in a separate hard drive. I'm going to go to NI content and that's on a different hard drive. So you don't have to have all of this stuff on your main hard drive. And then I'm going to go to the menu that says sounds, double click on that, go to battery kits, and then it'll show all of the kits that you've got with that expansion. You just double click, load them into battery and you're good to go. So that is probably the easiest way to use these kits outside of machine. But what if you don't have battery? There is a little program that I found watching Ab McCree's video and Sanjay C's video on KitMaker. I'll leave a link in the description for their videos because they go into a little bit more detail about how you can use KitMaker in other programs other than what I'm showing you here. But I will show it to you in terms of what you would do with something like Cubase or with Reason. And this will of course apply to all sorts of other programs as well. So all you have to do is go click on the import button. I'm going to click right there, go to my libraries. And then I'm going to find any kind of expansion that I want to mess around with. I'm going to go to my Crate Cuts library, which is a great expansion. And in here, what you're looking for is the folder that says Groups. I'm going to double click on Groups, double click on Kits, and then just hit Open. And then I'm going to hit Make Kits. It's going to make kits. It's going to skip over any sounds that weren't actually samples. So some of the sounds that come with machine expansions on the groups are actually synth sounds. So if it's not a sample, it just will be empty. So then we go over to where the files are and we look under kit maker kits, numbered kits, machine kits, and there is crate cuts library ready for us to use in different programs. So the next thing I'm going to do is go over to Cubase and let's just show you what you would do in something like Groove Agent, which is the free little drum sampler, drum machine type thing in Cubase. Uh, so I'm going to go over to Drum and Groove Agent SE, go add track. And then in Groove Agent, all I have to do is turn on the little browser. And then I'm going to go over to the browser itself until I get to the Crate Cuts library. So let's try this Dream On one. And you can see all the different samples that got loaded up in here. And then to get those onto the pads in Groove Agent, all I have to do is select all of them, drag over to the first pad. And instead of dropping at the top here, which is just one, sample. I want to put this on our one pad. What I want to do is put this on all pads. So I drag to the bottom, let it go. And now 
we can hear all of those samples are loaded onto the keys. We could also do that in something like Reason, double click on the Kong drum designer, and then here what I'm going to do is open up the Reason browser, go to the desktop, go to the kit maker kits, numbered kits, etc. until I find the group I want to load. And the next thing I want to do is select all of those samples, drag them onto the first one, and then with Kong, it just spreads them out on all of the different pads. And the only thing I noticed that you have to do with this is on some of these groups, if you can't hear it, just change this little hit type over here to hit type one, and then you'll be able to hear them all and be able to play them on your keyboard. And you kind of get the idea. We can load these samples into any kind of drum machine or sampler that you might have on your system. Next thing we'll look at is the synthesizer patches. So I'm going to go over to complete control one more time, hit add track. And in here, what we're going to do is we're going to look for the different synthesizers that are featured in Native Instruments expansions. So we've got Monarch, Massive, and Reactor Prism. And I'll just show you one of those synthesizers so you can see what that's all about. But all you got to do is load up the instrument that you want. So you can load this anywhere you want. So I could load Massive inside Complete Control, or I could load it on its own. So there's Massive. Let's just make it to the edit view so we can see everything. I'm going to go over to the browser. And in the browser of Massive itself, all I have to do is look over here under Sounds, and I'm going to see in the menu all of my expansions. So they're all in here, and the patches are kind of ready to go. So you'll see that not all of them have massive sounds in them. So Aquarius Earth doesn't have any massive sounds. It's got some monarch sounds. Anima Ascent does have some massive sounds. So I double click on that. So I click on that and then there are my patches. The next thing we should talk about are the loops and the samples. You could use this in any library, of course. You could access the loops for, for any program. But I'll just show you how you can do it in Complete Control because it is a kind of nice way of working. If I go over to Loops right there, click this little drop down, I'm going to see all of my expansions. Let's go over to Magnetic Coast. Love that library. And I do have reviews on a ton of these expansions. I'll leave a playlist in the description or at the end of the video as well. So you can see what the sounds are like in all these. And now I'm seeing all the loops that come with this expansion called Magnetic Coast. So here's a nice little drum loop. What I'm going to do is just double click on this. It's going to load it up inside Complete Control as an audio loop, but it will allow you to do some basic things like pitch shifting and time stretching and stuff like that. So the default state is probably the best way in that you just hold down your middle C and it's going to play the, the, the loop in the key that it started out as. If I go down the keyboard, you can hear that's being pitched up, but the tempo is actually staying the same, which is a really nice uh, way to work. So you can see I've got a couple of different engines I can choose here. Let's go to 85 beats per minute. So it's going to stick to the tempo of your project in whatever program you're in. I'm inside Cubase using complete control, and this is all working uh, really nicely. So there isn't a lot of slicing and stuff that you can do in complete control, but it does give you basic access to the loops. If you want to slice it up in whatever program you want, just drag that actual loop from the hard drive into your audio program, and it's as simple as that. Let's try a synth loop just for fun. Keeping it all at the same tempo, but allowing you to change the pitch of things that are pitched. So really nice way to work with these loops. It's free. It's easy. 
that is loops and accessing them in the expansions. And then the same thing sort of goes with one shot. So that's what this other icon in Complete Control is. And this is going to allow you to access all of the single sounds that are in any expansion. So you're going to find tons of these one shots in all of the expansions. Check out Crate Cuts again. And then here I can see all sorts of samples that I can access. And if you want to work with one of these samples at a time, you can load it up in this audio module in Complete Control. And all it's going to do is pitch the sample up and down for you to use as a single sample. But this isn't quite as good as some of the things they have in the expansions, which is the last kind of aspect I'll talk about, which is called sounds. And so the way a sound works technically in machine is it's a sampled instrument and it could either be one sample that's stretched out over the whole keyboard like this was just here in the audio module, or it could be multi sampled kind of like a basic sampler. And so we can load those samples into a program like contact. And unfortunately, it's a little bit tricky. So I'll show you how to do that. But then you could do this in any sampler. So I'm going to go over to this marble rims library. And if you watch the last video on my channel here, you'll see a video where I go through and talk about all the great sounds in the expansions. And I mean, specifically the multi sampled instruments, and there's tons of them in there that you may not have noticed before. So I'm in this marble rims library right here. And their flute samples are really great. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all of these flute samples and I'm going to drag and drop them right inside an empty contact. It's going to make a contact for me. I'm going to click the little wrench and then I'm going to go over to the mapping editor and you can see that all of the samples have been loaded into contact, which is great, but have a listen. Kind of not exactly in order or useful. But luckily, they do label the samples for these kinds of sounds very well so that we can go and use the sort of intelligent features of your sampler to auto map these samples in the right spot. So I'm going to show you the way that I found that works for me. And what we need to do is select all of the samples. And this is going to be some basic contact stuff. This can go obviously really deep with contact. You can set up multiple layers and velocity layers and stuff like that, but we won't worry about that here. We'll just get it kind of basically going. Select all the samples. Next thing I'm going to do is right click and I'm going to choose auto map setup. And you can see that it's going to say, okay, what do we want to do with this information? This, and if there's more zones of information in each sample, it'll, it'll give you options with what to do with each of those areas. And so in this one, we just got a name and a note number. So we're going to say this note number, we're going to set this to a single key. And then I'm going to hit apply and then I'm going to close it. So now we can see everything got kind of got shuffled over a little bit. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to go to batch tools and we're going to say move root key to center. Next thing we're going to do is right click and we're going to go to auto map functions and we're going to say auto spread key ranges via root keys. So this one's a little bit easier because this flute is multi sampled on every note, but other samples don't work quite as easily. So you can see that it's now mapped everything up the keyboard with all of the samples it has. And then it's taken the very first sample and stretched it all the way down to the bottom of the keyboard and the highest sample and stretch it all the way to the top of the keyboard. So let's see if this worked. So that worked perfectly. Really nice flute sound, flute samples that came with this marble rims library and easily mapped out all over the keyboard. So let's see if we can do a little bit more of a tricky one. I'm going to get rid of this group right here. I don't want to save that. And of course, you can save your patches after you've made them. But let's go to the Aquarius Earth Library. We're going to go to Samples, and then we're going to go to Instruments, and then we'll go to Keys. And then here we're going to go, let's go see if we can play with this Swank Ivory one. This is kind of a neat lo-fi sounding piano. I'm going to select all of the samples from that instrument, drag and drop, click the wrench, click the mapping ed editor. Here we see our samples. Let's select all of them. Obviously, this isn't a multi sample piano from top to bottom. And so we're going to have to stretch out some of these samples. So let's just see how we do that. Right click, auto map setup, and then we're going to go set to single key, hit apply. 
and then we're going to close it. And we can see that it went to some interesting spots. Let's see what that sounds like. So, so far it sounds, you know, very wrong. I'm going to right click all the samples. I'm going to go over to batch tools and then I'm going to move root key to center and then I'm going to right click one more time and go auto map functions and go auto spread key ranges via root keys. And let's see if this worked. Now we have that little swank ivory piano mapped properly over the range of the keyboard even if the samples weren't you know sampled every other note or every single note and this one it's a little bit random but it properly stretches out the samples over the keys for us so nice little trick if you have contact you're going to want to do this inside any kind of sampler that you have hopefully has some functionality to figure out where the root notes are supposed to be and then how you can stretch them out over the range in between the note consecutive notes. So I hope that was helpful for you. Native Instruments expansions are fantastic and definitely worth checking out. Right now there is a sale on and I'll put a link to that in the description. I do have an affiliate link for that so I will get a kickback if you click the link. I'm not paid by Native Instruments but they do provide me with the software. Hopefully if you watch my other videos on the expansions you'll find the expansions that are right for you. I don't want you buying something that you're not going to use and that's the whole point of me making these videos so you're not buying something that you're just going to let sit on a folder on your hard drive. And then make sure you hit the subscribe button and the bell for more videos in the future. And thanks for watching.